Thank you very much, Stella. Thank you very much for also for the organizers to invite me here and for the opportunity to give this talk. So today I would like to speak about a very simple model. It's like, it's non-interacting, therefore I will consider just Anderson localization, but I will go to the uh, situation when, like, if you consider, for example, dipolar system with few dipoles there, dilute uh, dipoles there. So if, if you go to the Lakatra expansion part, which is above this uh, dashed line, so this is the usual part, which is known from like uh, end of 80s. I would like to go to this part of the phase diagram and say, is it possible to have their localization, Anderson localization, non-interacting one, uh, beyond the Lacandre expansion? And can it be affected by the anisotropy? By anisotropy, I mean just that what I have the two-dimensional dipolar system in the electric field, and I can tilt this electric field by tilting the dipoles uh, being uh, aligned or anti-aligned to this electric field. So this is just one example. In general, I will just try to uh, explain you when it is possible to realize this localization beyond the Lacadre expansion, uh, how it can be affected by disorder, by anisotropy. Okay, so probably I will not have time to uh, touch the point uh, how to affect it by the uh, trying reversal symmetry breaking. But so I will be mostly focusing on these three papers. So next slide is the most important slide because it introduces my collaborators. And here I should mention uh, like all of them. Here I will be focusing only on the first three papers. Therefore, uh, so they are done in collaboration with these five gentlemen. Uh, Anton is my current PhD student, finishing and soon uh, writing the thesis. Pavel was my summer student. Now he's in Stanford as a PhD. Uh, Vladimir Krasov is my co-author for like years. Uh, since 2015, and uh, more recently, I was in touch with uh, Alexander Gurin from Tulana in the US and Xiaolan Bank in Hanover. Other people are involved in other projects, and uh, also in the audience, we have Alexander Gorsky from Russia, so you can discuss with him other projects which we have. And these are well, my summer students. Okay, what will we be talking about? First, let me just remind you the briefly what we have in Anderson localization, what is Anderson localization, why it's happening uh, as transition in 3D and only localization of any finite disorder in 1 and 2D system, and uh, how to restore this Anderson localization transition in low dimensional systems, whether it's possible or not. And just in the end of the introduction, I just tell you how to estimate the transition uh, using the resonance count. The main part, the main question which I would like to ask will be in the middle, in the central part, whether it's possible to have the localization beyond the Lakater expansion. I provide you several examples. Uh, maybe I will not mention this, but there are uh, models with which are bad transats integrable, which are localized or not integrable by bad transats and still uh, with the local Lakater expansion uh, divergence and localization at the same time. And in the end of my talk, I just uh, explain how it is possible, why it is so analytically, and what do we see numerically, which effects we can expect if we break this. Okay, let me start from the introduction. All we know what is Anderson localization, just Anderson model is that uh, we have one particle living in the disordered potential, which can hold within the adjusted sites. As soon as the uh, amplitude of the disorder is small, and here I plot it as a 1D, but you should keep in mind three-dimensional system, of course, what we can do, we can say, okay, it's just a classical particle, forget about interferences, and then it's just a random walk in their uh, like diffusive propagation as soon as the mean level space, in, oh, so mean free pass is much larger than the Fermi depth. As soon as we increase the disorder, we cannot do like this. We cannot consider that our electron or like our particle to be uh, just classical. We should take into account interference terms, not only the probabilities, but also interference with the different paths. And the main contribution will be given by the paths which are going along the same trajectory, but like clockwise and counterclockwise, giving the positive additional contribution to the backscatter. So because of that, as soon as the disorder is increasing, this contribution is increasing and can even diverge from the system size. What we see if we send the plane wave to such some sample, we will see the exponential decay of the wave function. So just localization. Within these two regimes, we have the Anderson localization transition at a certain point of the disorder, which separates the bulk ergodic states, which are metallic ones, if you want diffusive ones, from the localized ones. So in this model, they are just exponential. 
This is more or less the result of the Anderson uh, paper, seminal paper in 1958. Next, in the Gago 4 uh, paper, what was understood that in these short range models, uh, you have these divergence of different divergence of the uh, uh, localization corrections, which is either linear diversion in one dimensional system, logarithmical diversion in 2D, and just conversion for this finite contribution depending on the amplitude of the disorder and some some linear. Which means that as soon as we go to the thermodynamic limit, immediately in all these short range models, all the states are localized both in 1D and 2D, but as soon as you go to the three dimensional system, you have the finite amplitude of the disorder at the transition from delocalized to localized system. And the question which uh, people started to think of just immediately after this paper, whether it's possible to restore the Anderson delocalized phase or really Anderson uh, localization transition in low dimensional systems. And uh, to my mind, uh, there are, sorry, to my knowledge at least, there are at least two ways. You can affect either diagonal term or off diagonal term. If you affect diagonal term, we already heard about this several times, even like in the previous talk of Ulrich, uh, if you have quasi periodics, not the real disorder, but quasi periodic potential, really correlated disorder, then uh, what you can have, you can have a transition already in 1D, for example, with this uh, very well known Abriel brain. And now, thing which I will be focusing on, I can affect the hopping term if I make it long range. Why is this physically relevant to consider a long range hopping term? Just let me consider the diagonal model where all the diagonals are just interacting in the usual sense, but I have just few number of diagonals which are different from the others. For example, I have two diagonals down and all the others are diagonals. All the, these diagonals are interact with each other. And therefore, this interaction applied to these diagonals will just flip them. And you see that it looks like this excitation, this blue line, blue uh, dot is just there or there. So therefore, in the dilute regime of few excitations, what you have is just effective model is of this form with some disorder on site and the hopping just mediated by this diagonal interaction. This was considered by Lenitiv already in the end of 80s, uh, and it was shown that this complete model in 3D cor corresponds to neither localized nor hypotic states, critical states, this is the disorder, uh, the critical point uh, in terms of this uh, power. What we know now, maybe Ulrich can uh, correct me, that it's possible to realize any power between zero and two here with the dipolar interaction. If we go to Rydberg atoms or in the cavity or cold atoms, if we just consider the interaction with the photons in such a way that uh, by absorbing and uh, exciting photons, the excitation can really effectively uh, hop to a longer distances, which are not like the amplitude decay, not as a dipole dipole interaction, but like some generic uh, power law decaying interaction with a certain numerator. So, but now what we have, we have the parameter alpha, which we can tune. And according to, to this, as we tune the parameter alpha, we can undergo the transition. Why as a parameter alpha, but not as an amplitude of the disorder? It's easy to understand. Let me send this parameter to infinity first. Then I return back to the short range model. Short range model in the dimensionality d smaller than two, smaller or equal than two, will give me just localization. If I send this parameter to zero, I will end up in something which is very similar to the Gaussian random matrix ensemble. It will be even more clear if I consider instead of this dipole dipole, I consider just the models suggested by Merlin, Alexander Merlin, uh, where I just replace this numerator by the Gaussian random number. As soon as I send alpha to zero, it will be exactly Gaussian random ensemble with the ergodic wave functions. So it means that uh, as soon as I change this power alpha, I should undergo the transition. The claim of these papers was that this transition occurs at alpha equals to the dimensionality of the system. And let me just show you why it is happening like this. So in order to understand, let me just consider the local side of the transition, where I just uh, perturbatively take into account the Hobbit term. Just writing the Locator expansion, which is just the perturbation theory with a strong disorder, I will see that as soon as I uh, have the hopping term small compared to the inter uh, site on site energy distance, uh, then of course I will have just the convergence of this Locator expansion, just perturbation theory, localization of energy. What 
can be dangerous for me is that if I have two energies close in and close to each other, closer than the hopping term coupling between them. These states are called resonance pair, and therefore they can diverge my lack of expansion. What I should do instead of considering just perturbation theory, I should take into account that it's degenerate or nearly degenerate perturbation theory, and I should diagonalize this matrix of two by two. If I have many of them, then I should diagonalize the degenerate perturbation theory of this large matrix. But now, if I just count the number of resonances, number of terms where J, M, N is larger than this difference, uh, for all sides N with respect to their certain starting side M, this number, number of resonance can either diverge with the system size or be converged. If it's convergent, what I do is just, I use this degenerate perturbation theory in this large but finite block and say, okay, with increasing system size, all the rest will give me just the perturbation theory, which is convergent, localization. Now, if I have uh, the other way that this number is divergent, what I will have delocalization. So on this side of the transition, uh, it will be just the number of these resonances should be finite. In order to make it more clear what people are doing, they call it resonance counting. They consider the uh, random epsilon diagonal this or the random hopping and just calculate their probability to have two sides M and N in resonance just by uh, having this threefold integral in the range where their uh, energy difference is more than hopping. And if I would like to consider the convergence of all these Lagrange expansion series with respect to all hoppings from M to all Ns, I should sum over all probabilities, and this will be the estimate of the number of resonances. I can take uh, this integration over the box distribution, it's not so important. The main part is that as soon as the number of resonances is not scaling with the system size, still finite in the pyramid dynamic limit is the Lacadre expansion, and therefore it's convergent. We have localized phase, but as soon as we go beyond it, we have divergence of Lacadre expansion, and the answer is that's usually okay. Breaks down should be a galicity. So in order to consider uh, this on the concrete example, let me just show it for this uh, power law decay model where I can consider the certain distance R and in distance R in D-dimensional system, I will have R to D number of sites. Therefore, each of these on these sites, I have energy of order of W, interlevel distance of two adjacent energies on site energies will scale down like W over R to D. While the hopping term will scale down differently, as R to alpha. Okay, and now let me consider two different uh, situations. Alpha larger than D and alpha smaller. If alpha larger than D, so that matter whether I start with very big disorder or not, as soon as alpha is larger than D, after some finite radius R star, this term will decay smaller, faster than the mean level spacing, and therefore I will have just maybe large, but finite number of resonances, and I will have localization. In the opposite limit, as soon as alpha is smaller than D, doesn't matter how strong is their disorder, after some time, after some increase in R, these terms still decay slower and becomes larger at some point. I will have more and more resonances with increasing system size. So therefore, as soon as I have divergence of the Lakata expansion alpha smaller than D, this divergence is, is dominated by the large distances the system size distance. Therefore, it should be okay. So far, so good. Introduction. But now let me provide you the puzzle. So what is known, just one uh, side remark, what is known for this uh, power law model on the localized side is that it's not exponentially localized, but it's power law localized. Why? Because the hopping term is power law decaying, the first order perturbation theory will give you just the power law decaying for your function. Just keep it in mind that it's not X, uh, so it's not actually localized by power. Now let me do one thing, one trick. So what I have so far, I have this amplitude, uncorrelated random numbers everywhere. So di diagonal is random. All diagonal of diagonal amplitudes are random, but decay with the polynomial with the system size. Let me replace all these random numbers by one. I make them fully correlated. And what I immediately numerically see, if I compare it to the previous slide, I get rid of the ergodic delocalized phase at all. Does not matter what is alpha, I will have localization like in short range. 
Moreover, if I plot the wave function decay on the right hand side is the same as it was before, but on the left hand side, the bulk wave functions are also decaying polynomially, and this polynomial uh, exponent is symmetric with respect to the point alpha equal to d. Here I consider t equal to 1. This is a kind of a puzzle because we have first localization beyond the perturbation theory convergence. And so what is possible or not, we don't know, right? So this was shown in several papers like five and three years ago. In addition, what it means is that if I compare this to phase diagrams, what I change is this model. So I had the disorder only on the diagonal. I introduced the disorder to the hopping term. And therefore, for a long range hopping term, I can go to delocalized phase from the localized one if I increase the disorder, but is in hopping. This is somehow counterintuitive. In order to make it even worse, let me return back to the uh, dipolar model with this uh, strong electric field and show that if we have the tilt, just I show once again the phase diagram, which I showed in the first slide, what you can have is the following. In the isotropic case, two-dimensional system and electric field is perpendicular, I have all the same what in the previous slides, just uh, for all alphas, positive alphas, I have localization beyond the Lagrange expansion here. As soon as I undergo uh, to the tilted field, depending on alpha, I can undergo the transition from localization beyond the Lagrange expansion to delocalization. Moreover, if my alpha is large enough, I can it can be re-entered. I tilt my ele uh, electric field from the perpendicular isotropic case and I can undergo delocalization and then localization first. How to understand all these puzzles? Let me go to the analytical part and explain to you how it is possible. So for this, uh, let me show you two things. First, of course, as soon as the Lakatra expansion converges, it doesn't matter whether I have correlations, I don't have correlations, it will be still Lakatra expansion, and like first order perturbation theory will give you more or less the answer. But as soon as I go to their divergence of their perturbation theory, alpha smaller than d, I should take into account another thing. You see that this term is special, not just in the sense that it's the disorder free, but it's also translation invariant. Therefore, I can just go to their momentum space in the discrete Fourier transform, where I can diagonalize this former co uh, coupling term to the diagonal disorder, diagonal potential, which is not disorder, but deterministic. Well, my hopping term uh, in the momentum space will be given by the diagonal disorder. It will be short, long range, fully long range, because if these guys are just Gaussian random numbers, these hopping terms will be also given the Gaussian random numbers, but translation invariant. Translation invariant, but the variance will go down as one over n. The main property of this model is the following. As soon as alpha is smaller than d, I can immediately see that the spectrum of the potential on the momentum space is diverging at small p. You can understand it easily. Just uh, send p to zero, and you will immediately see that you should sum up the positive terms, which are uh, decaying slower than their r to dimensionality of the system. As soon as I have the divergence, I have large energy, scaling with the system size. Or if you want, I have large energy differences. Mean level spacing at this moment is large. Of course, it can uh, persist only at uh, like small, uh, like zero fraction of all the momentum, small numbers, p star. But still, as soon as I have these large energies, I have the localization in the momentum space of measure zero of all the states. So it means that what I'm writing here as localization beyond the Lakatra expansion is not entirely true. I have measure zero states, anti ground states, which are delocalized. But they measure zero. They will not contribute to their like uh, diffusion constant if you want. They will contribute to the current. I'm interested in the bulk. What will happen with the bulk states if I have these high energy delocalized states? To understand this, let me use this hopping term written in the momentum space with large energies as soon as the momentum is smaller than some piston. Of course, this will give me the main contribution to this hopping term. Okay, one thing. Another thing, what I can use as soon as p is smaller than p star, all these states are localized in the momentum space. They're playing with in the real space. Therefore, I can just use the Lakatra expansion in the momentum space. 
and to write these terms, not in terms of the plane waves, but in terms of the aching states of the entire Hamiltonian. Let me do this. By doing this, I, of course, will have some residual term, which is uh, given by the summation of P larger than P star and all these additional perturbations here, but this is small. What is the property of this guy if I apply it to the bulk energy states of the entire Hamiltonian, because of the orthogonality, these states are in the, the eigen states of the entire Hamiltonian, this term will be orthogonal. And the only hopping term which will be visible by the bulk states will be a residual one. This is the main part of the story. There's a classic qualitative one. Take home message of the following. As soon as you have few, maybe measure zero, maybe extensive number, but measure zero, few high energy extended states, which dominate in the hopping term, they can screen out the bulk states. And the bulk states can be localized or non-ergodic, depending on the spectrum. So in the next uh, couple of slides, I just will show you uh, how to uh, consider this residual hopping term in the concrete model. What you can do is a very simple trick. Let me send to the left all the hopping terms, all the diagonal terms on the right, and then, in order to get rid of these large energies, I just can inverse this matrix by sending these energies to the denominator. What I can do in order to avoid any uh, resonance is I add the energy shift here to the left and to the right, just energy shift, and invert this matrix, applying this matrix to the minus power minus one here and there. For a moment, it's something very strange what I wrote is like, what is this? It's just the same basis. What I re re it's rewritten in a sense that. I have the diagonal matrix multiplied by the matrix with a narrow spectrum. Where is this order? Where is copy? In order to understand this, I should uh, tell you that, of course, this matrix is still translation invariant, and therefore its diagonal is still constant, just energy shift. I can get rid of it and consider separately the diagonal part and all diagonal part. Therefore, here is just the same basis, the same uh, representation. What is written here is just I have effective energy, effective, effective disorder, and effective hopping term, which is much, much slow, smaller than the previous one, because I send all these large energies to the denominator. In the concrete case of this uh, model, which I considered isotropic one, I can even calculate what will be this uh, hopping term. So what I had so far, I had the, uh, the hopping term decay, like power law with power alpha smaller than dimensionality of the system D, after the Fourier transform, the spectrum indeed will diverge, like n to the n divided by p, p is the integer number from one to n, to the power one minus alpha. If I would like to invert this, what I will do, because this is the large number, I will just change the symmetry with respect to one minus alpha, alpha minus one. So it's the only difference which I have, still power law. If I do the inverse Fourier transform, I should have also power law, but here I should replace alpha minus one by one minus alpha. Eventually, if I do this, just simple uh, trick, residual copy term as soon as alpha is smaller than one will be indeed symmetric to the one which is with alpha large one. And I see that it's just perturbation theory here as well as here if I go to the bulk of the spectrum. I can restore Anderson principle of resonance counting after this one. So I have probably just a couple of minutes more. Let me just show you that it's possible what is possible to do with all this uh, in general. So in general, you can consider whatever hopping if it's smooth and isotropic, and you can show indeed either with this matrix inversion trick if you have diagonal disorder, or a little bit more involved if you do not have diagonal disorder but you have spatial disorder, the not the fixed lattice but the random positions of atoms, if you want. Uh, with a special RT, special one, which we developed with my P assistant, what you can show so far in general as a result that still either in convergent perturbation theory or divergent one, you will have bulk of the spectrum to be localized. In D-dimensional systems uh, smaller than uh, or equal than two, it will be measure one of the states which are localized. And uh, you will have the kind of the symmetry that the residual hopping term will be not renormalized, of course, the conversion perturbation theory, and it will be renormalized in such a way that it will be much smaller than the mill level space in the dimensions as soon as you go to the diversion perturbation theory. So it means that you 
for any model with their Hopin term decaying slower than the one over R to D, you can find the corresponding model with conversion perturbation theory in this form, which uh, shows you the localization, okay, maybe not power law, but whatever is this function of here, localization of, of the wave functions there. Another thing which you can do is just let me return to this last, last uh, slide, is this anisotropy mediated localization delocalization. How to understand this? It can be understood in the same way. What we understood so far is that as soon as we have divergence of the spectrum, and we can use this matrix inversion trick, so it means that my divergence is only to the one direction of the spectrum, for example, positive energies, I still have localization for the bulk of the spectrum. So, and this model, which, uh, which is here, dipole dipole interaction is written in the, like uh, this homogeneous, if you want, anisotropic case with the electric field tilted with respect to the vertical axis perpendicular to the plane with one anisotropic parameter, which is just three sinus sinusoidal squared uh, of this theta angle with respect to that direction. As soon as that is going to zero, if considered before anisotropic case, as soon as beta is going to two is the usual uh, two-dimensional dipole dipole interaction. So what we have so far, we have three points, which we considered already. And uh, let me just plot what will be the spectrum of this Hopin term in these three core points. As soon as it's isotropic, what we have, of course, we have the diversion to one direction, and therefore we have the same localization beyond the Lakater expansion with the matrix inversion trick. We can shift it in order to avoid zeros and invert this matrix uh, in order to have residual hopping. As soon as we go slightly beyond this, tilt our model, we still have the, the, the spectrum which is diverging to one direction, but not to the other. We can use the same. But as soon as we undergo their alpha equal to beta point, we immediately see that the spectrum diverges to both directions, positive and negative. And therefore, first, we cannot use matrix inversion tree. Why? We cannot just find the finite energy to shift in order to avoid resonance. Or another understanding of this is that so what we had before, these large energy states, they have the main contribution to the Hopin term, which is not compensated by anything. And therefore, they can uh, be screened, uh, they screen out all the bulk states. Here, these two terms, which are based positive and negative, they indeed can uh, give the main contribution to the Hopin term, but it can cancel out as soon as you consider these energies positive and negative. And therefore, they, it's not enough to affect these bulk states and localize them beyond the local expansion convergence. With this, I would like to sum up uh, and uh, say you what we considered. So first, it's kind of the role of the correlations in hopping, not only in the, the diagonal term, correlation in long-range hopping. And the main point here is that as soon as you can find the spectrum of the hopping term, is not a free hopping term. Then it's just enough to have few, maybe extensive number, but measure zero, high energy states which are delocalized in their co coordination basis. They can affect the physics of bulk spectral states even by localizing them. I haven't uh, shown you the examples where they, they break your periodicity, and it's also possible. Other thing which is just a methodological one is that you can derive uh, this Lakater expansion uh, divergent localization with the matrix inversion trick, special RT, and you will find the kind of the duality between the wave function localization decay rate. And you can understand that this can be applicable to like delocalization by applying disorder, which we consider in this uh, dual law models, or even reentrant localization by anisotropy if you tilt all the dipoles uh, with respect to the two dimensional plane. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention. I didn't have time to touch to other things uh, that you can really on target make localization and ergodicity breaking properties of bulk states by changing just high energy spectrum. And so the interplay with the beta and that's integrability. But maybe next time or during the discussion, we can touch this. Thank you very much.